The Chicago Bears are in the process of finalizing their big board, ranking all the prospects in the 2023 NFL Draft. So that means it's time for us to put together our ranking, our big board, of who we think the Bears should draft with the ninth overall pick. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at CoxSports1. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit the subscribe button on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And on the show today, we're putting together a Bears NFL Draft big board. We're not going to do 300 plus players like Ryan Poles in the Bears front office, but what we are going to do is look at the Bears first round pick. The team picks ninth overall, barring a trade down or a trade up, which means only eight players can come off the board, which means... The Bears will get one of their top nine players on their big board. One of those nine players, they, if they rank nine players, one of them is guaranteed to be there because only eight of them can be taken. So we'll put together essentially our top nine, our list of like, okay, who's ever highest on this big board when the Bears are on the clock, that's who they should take. That's how we start to piece together the order of operations here. And you'll be guaranteed to get one of these nine players. It has to start in a fairly obvious place, I think, with where we were back when the Bears still had the number one overall pick before they had traded down to nine and it was the cream of the crop. That's kind of how you have to treat this, right? It's like, okay, if they had a number one overall pick, who would they pick first? And then from there, who would they pick if that guy's gone? And if that guy's gone, who would they pick? And if those four guys are gone, who's the next choice? That's that's the process that we're going through here. And that has to start with Will Anderson from Alabama at the top of the big board, right? The edge rusher was already, the at, at worst, a coin toss as a potential option there for the number one overall pick with Jalen Carter, the defensive lineman from Georgia. But as it stands right now, given Jalen Carter's arrest, and I guess arrest warrant, but the legal trouble that he had gotten into this past year and, and then arrested, it led to leave the NFL combine early to be arrested. Between that and having a very poor pro day, looking out of shape, not well prepared for that, and there being other lingering questions about his football motivation, his his participation, and maybe some questions of that on tape as well. To me, well, I think Jalen Carter is still a very good player and is likely worthy of a first-round pick and may even be taken before the Bears draft at nine. He's not going to be in my Bears big board. Doesn't mean I'm taking off my draft board completely, but he's not one of the guys I'm going to take with the ninth overall pick in this draft. I think he would probably be second to Will Anderson otherwise, and arguably first ahead of Will Anderson. If you took, certainly if you took away the on-field, like football motivation questions about how hard he practices and how hard he plays in the game. If you took away those and it's just, those red flags are all gone, just on the field highlight talent that we see, Carter would be number one for me. Anderson would be number two, but all things considered, Anderson is number one on the big board, no doubt. Will be gone by the time the Bears draft at nine, but still have to, put him on the big board to have your order set. Carter, not going to be on the big board, but in an alternate reality, maybe he's number two here, maybe even number one on the big board. Instead, I think Tyree Wilson from Texas A&M is a pretty clear-cut number two for me on this big board. Another edge rusher who I think is an, a full step ahead, a full like tier ahead of certainly the rest of the edge rushers in this draft class, but even some of the other options at ninth overall pick. To me, it's pretty easy. Anderson is one. It's pretty easy that Wilson is two. He is long. He is strong. He is versatile. He's everything I think the Bears would covet in an edge rusher, and I just don't think he's going to be there with the ninth overall pick. But if he is, it's a very easy and obvious run up to the draft board, turn in your pick, or the, the draft podium or whatever, turn in your pick and and be very, very thrilled about what you're getting 
with that spot. Those two to me are, are the two easy ones to start this process. After I get past Wilson, it becomes a lot more difficult to try and separate, you know, how do you rank a cornerback versus an offensive tackle versus a wide receiver? Not in terms of the position and how much the Bears need those spots, but how good the prospect is, right? Is the really good cornerback better than the really good offensive tackle? They, they look nothing alike and do nothing alike on the football field, right? It becomes a very difficult process when you start to feel like some of these guys are a little bit more neck and neck in terms of the evaluation. And that to me was a signal right away in going through this big board process myself is that as soon as you get to the spot where it's difficult to separate guys in your mind, that to me says, this is where you look to trade down. If I can get to a certain spot on my big board and say, yeah, you know, there's, I'm having trouble separating two or three or four guys even, then that means if I end up with any of them, I'm not going to be disappointed and I'd be happy with any of the four of them. And there's not a lot separating them. So why not then trade down and let, let other teams pick a few of those guys first. You still get a guy you would have loved with your pick and also acquire whatever additional draft capital you could get. Like I think Anderson and Tyree Wilson are the only two prospects that I'm for sure not going to trade down. Certainly, I mean, if somebody gave me a ridiculous offer to trade down, yeah, I've thrown in some first-round picks or something. I'm ne- it's not never, say never would trade down if Wilson or Anderson were there. But those are the two guys where it's like, yeah, I don't, don't need to trade down. Feeling pretty good about the, pr- the pick that I'm getting there. So like, but once you get after them, there's three or four or five guys in this next sort of tier, if you will, that we're still going to rank in an order, but I feel like you're nitpicking a little bit between them and... I would be happy with, almost equally happy with any combination of these guys in terms of going after the best player available. So really my, like my number three option would be to trade down. It's not a player. That's not, it's not what the big board, it's not how the big board works, but I think it's important to sort of identify that spot on the big board where you say, yeah, like I can, if I could trade down and land any of the next handful of guys, I'd be happy with that and don't need to feel like, oh, I have to get this number three guy on my big board or else otherwise I'm going to be settling for a much, much worse prospect. I think that's that's kind of the spot on the board where I say, let me see what my trade down offers are. I'm not going to trade down desperately to just get whatever garbage some team would give me. Like I want to get some value out of it. I would be happy staying there and still taking some of the other guys that I like. But if I can squeeze a little bit more value, that's where I would go to. If Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson are for sure off the board. We'll look at who might be next and, and how we start to try and separate corners, receivers, and offensive linemen, and and then also defensive linemen and edge rushers as well, next on Locked On Bears. The Locked On Bears podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Ultimate Football GM. We've been talking about this mobile game app for a little while now, and telling you what, if you haven't tried it yet, you're missing out on a lot of fun. Because if you've ever thought you'd make a good NFL general manager, you got to give this game a try because they put you in complete control over your own football franchise. And it's really not as easy as you might think to make a dynasty. I have struggled. I, I, I make the playoffs pretty consistently, but it's hard to really put that team over the top. The guys who make Ultimate Football GM have created a really fun and challenging, but like realistic game world where you set your lineups, you're, you're making all the transactions, free agents, draft picks, you're hiring and firing coaches and scouts and front office people, you're setting ticket prices and all sorts of control over everything that you can do with your football franchise. And it's free to play, available in any and all of the app stores. Right now, Locked On Bears listeners are going to get a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use our promo code LOCKED ON in all caps in the game's store. That's all caps LOCKED ON. So make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. The Bears are looking to start a dynasty with the ninth overall pick here to get the beginnings going with a foundational piece at nine. And I think when we talk about putting together a big board, I'm trying to, for the most part, not ignore positional value, but try and ignore a little bit needs for the Bears. That I, I look at a big board as best player Available. I didn't look at this and say, oh, you know, they could really use a, a, a offensive tackle or an edge rusher a lot more than some of these other positions. So then I should put the edge rushers and offensive tackles above some of the lesser need positions. 
because they're because they just there's a bigger need and you want to get that filled. Like I'm approaching this exercise today in big boarding in saying, okay, at the ninth overall pick, the Bears need to get the best player that they can. They're not like so close that, oh, they just won one offensive tackle away from being good or one edge rusher away from being good. They just need good football players. And when you're drafting the top 10, give me the player that's going to play like a top 10 pick that gives me the best chance of him being a Pro Bowl player who gets a second contract with this team and is a foundational piece for the next 10 plus seasons. And I think after I get past Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson, there's a few guys that definitely fit that description. And I want to, again, emphasize like I'm I, we start nitpicking here between prospects. So I don't I, I'm certainly open to arguments and disagreement on how you rank guys from here. I mean, I'm always open to that, but especially at this point, like I don't see this as like a steadfast, like you're wrong if you don't think this is the order these players should be ranked in. I'm open to I'm open to other perspectives on this, but I think my third player is going to be Devin Witherspoon, the cornerback from Illinois. Again, doesn't like feels like if the Bears took a cornerback at nine, you'd be a little disappointed that they don't didn't get an edge rusher or an offensive tackle because like those are the really big needs there, and they don't you know, they just drafted a cornerback in the second round last year. They have Jalen Johnson and Kyler Gordon, but Devin Witherspoon or is it Devon? I'm not sure. D E V O N is really good. I mean, he is the classic like top ten pick cornerback who who steps in right away and is a Pro Bowler. Maybe not, not maybe not as a rookie, but just like. Super, super solid, consistent, smart, like just really smart football player. Like the kind of player that transitions well to the NFL, picks it up quickly, and is good to go. You know, aggressive, physical, great movement ability, you know, can close on close on the ball. I think he's best like in off coverage, like in zone. Not, maybe not in the exact ways that the Bears would always use him, but I think he would be a good scheme fit that way. He might be a little bit on the lighter side, and, you know, at, at times he can be a little bit grabby, but this is like your classic like number one, smart, savvy cornerback who steps in and looks like a veteran from day one. And for the Bears, you've got Jalen Johnson, who is set to be a free agent next year. And the feeling is that maybe there's just rumblings that he and the Bears might not be on the same page. And that's not to say that he's going to leave or whatever, but just like there's more of, I, I don't know, I just have this sliver of a like doors open there. It's like, could something go wrong? Maybe. And so there's a certain security you get of like, okay, drafting a number one corner here. Plus, Kyler Gordon struggled quite a bit as a rookie. Not to say he's a bust, not to say he's never going to be any good. No, but like you have these slight little reasons as to like why maybe drafting a cornerback might not be such a bad idea. And of course, you play three cornerbacks all the time. So you might as well have three really good ones. Yeah, ideally, Jalen Johnson resigns, Kyler Gordon gets a lot better, and you add Devon Witherspoon, and it's like, boom, you got one of the best young cornerback groups in the NFL, and that's a great thing. And it's worth it with the ninth overall pick to just get a player truly worthy of the ninth overall pick. And I think, well, while cornerback is not the need and you'd be mad that they're drafting cornerbacks with their first picks two years in a row, just give me the best football player at nine. And if you're most certain that he's going to pan out, that's that's my guy. And that's why I think Dev, Devon Witherspoon is, is the option for me at that spot. But it starts to nitpick, right? Because fourth on my big board then, I really struggled with this, man. This was this was tough. But I, I went Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State. I just feel like, again, like, you know, the wide receiver, you have you have DJ Moore, you have Darnell Mooney, you have Chase Claypool. It's not the biggest need, but Mooney and Claypool are free agents after the season, and you never know. And Claypool has been disappointing. They're kind of in that same, similar kind of conversation as Kyler Gordon and, and, and Jalen Johnson, just in, in very different ways. And for me, Jackson Smith and Jigba is a plug-and-play thousand-yard wide receiver. Like maybe he's limited to the slot. Maybe he's not the fastest guy on the field, but like everyone he gets compared to, right? Like Amon Ross St. Brown, Pro Bowler this year, 900 yards as a rookie, 1,100 yards as in his second year. Like sign me up for that with the ninth overall pick. Or he gets compared to Cooper Cup, who led the NFL in receiving. Like these are the kind of players we're talking about. And especially with JSN, the floor is so high there. Maybe the ceiling, the ceiling is always a question mark for every team, every player. And like even, but even if he never gets to like, Cooper Cup levels, like, you know, at a bare minimum, he's such a good route runner. He's so smart. He's got good hands and he's sturdy. Like that's going to be a guy who plays 15 years in the NFL if he wants to. How high he goes, you know, in terms of like the ceiling there is a question, but there doesn't, he's a very low chance to me of him busting out and him, a high chance of him being at worst, a very solid contributing player for your team. If not a thousand yard guy out of the slot each and every year. So sign me up for Jackson Smith and Jigba if you know, those three guys we talked about ahead of him are, are off the board. Again, I, I could easily be convinced to go Paris Johnson 
who I would throw in then at number five on the big board, just because need does start to become an equation here. And I think it's, it's, he's the, he's my favorite offensive tackle in this class. I think he's got all the physical tools you want, needs a little bit of technical refinement in terms of like pad level and, and usage of his hands a little bit more independently, but like he played at a really, really high level despite those flaws. And he's got the kind of flaws that are like most commonly coachable and fixable by a, a good offensive line coach in the NFL. And he's got all the physical tools that you want that you can't coach. Like that's exactly what I'm looking for. And of course it also being a very big need for the Chicago bears makes that a, an exciting mix. And that's why I think he slots in at five here on the big board. I mean, there's a decent chance Anderson, Wilson and Witherspoon, I think will likely all be off the board by the time the bears draft at nine. I'm guessing JSN won't be, but it certainly is a possibility. And so this is where we really starting to get the mix of guys that are like, yeah, you're, you're trying to decide. Do you take the wide receiver JSN? Do you take Paris Johnson on the offensive line? We shouldn't rule out the possibility that the bears like Broderick Jones, the offensive tackle from Georgia better than Paris Johnson. Broderick might be more the scheme fit or just the stylist stylistic fit that Ryan Poles seems to prefer. Personally, I don't quite see it here, but I'm only mentioning him here, not because he's on my big board here, but because some people, there are murmurs that Broderick Jones might be the first offensive tackle taken, that some NFL teams like Broderick Jones as offensive tackle number one. And so while I put Paris Johnson here, it wouldn't shock me if the Bears had Broderick Jones here. It also wouldn't shock me if, you know, you, they go somewhere else on the offensive line or a different position altogether. And that, you know, maybe maybe Jason is off the board and, you know, somebody jumps up, up past the Bears at, at nine to get some of these other guys and they have to dig a little bit farther down their big board, especially if teams don't go quarterback heavy and don't fall in love with these quarterback prospects and they start to fall a little bit. So we'll start to look at a little lower on the big board. We still have to get to eight guys or I guess nine guys because the Bears will be guaranteed one of nine. If we start to get into some of the worser, more worst case scenarios of not a lot of quarterbacks going and a lot of the position players the Bears want coming off the board ahead of time, we'll look at some really good guys that you would still be really happy the Bears took with the ninth overall pick next on Locked on Bears. Uh, I'm, I'm, I got to a point about here in the big board building process where it gets difficult again. It's like, I, I think Devin, Devon Witherspoon is CB1 for me, and I think the, the guy I really like there, Jackson Smith Ajiba, certainly the top wide receiver I would go with with the Bears spot there. And and Paris Johnson is my top offensive tackle. I also mentioned Brad Broderick Jones, who's not up there for me, but could be for the Bears. For here, From here, I, I come back around to Christian Gonzalez, the cornerback from Oregon. And, and I this, I struggle with him a little bit because, you know, he ran, a, he, he's got, he's a physical freak. I mean, he ran like a 4 3 8 40, super long arms, huge broad jump, huge vertical jump, like explosive, dynamic athlete, checks all the boxes of the physical tools that you just can't teach. And he's also like a really aggressive, like plays the ball in the air type of guy who wants to go pick off passes and be a little bit of that, that, that gambler. But it's not even like a risky gambler in terms of like, he's not jumping the route per se. He's just not afraid to go up and, and try and get it sometimes. And like, he, he can play the slot. He can play the outside. He does he does man coverage well. He does zone coverage well, press coverage, off coverage. Like, he does a lot of the things that you really like. But I I, I always get nervous about the, the guy where it feels like, okay, he had a great NFL combine, and then he shoots up way farther in the, in the, in the draft. Like, yes, he showed good, like, great athletic skills on tape, but, like, I think the combine even elevated that even farther. And now he's this sort of this like mythical physical specimen that you have to go get because he's so rare of an athlete and we'll, we'll, we'll fix any of the technical issues that he might have. And, and that's where I get like, again, I'm nitpicking here because I think he's still going to be very good, but it's just like, I'll take Witherspoon that feels like maybe doesn't have like the hype, the athletic tools hype, but it's just a better football player. And Gonzalez is the better athlete. And like I put Gonzalez here, because I still think he's a top 10 player in this draft, but we just it just bumps him down a little bit when I just get nervous about those kind of guys that where you start to get like rose-colored goggles for him where it's like, oh, you, you, you start to ignore or just downplay any concern you might have about his ability because he's got the physical tools because he's so fast and everything you would want, if you were hand-building your, cor your cornerback body out of clay physically like he is, he's what you want. 
And so that's why he's worthy of being up here, but why he's not higher on the list is because sometimes we fall in love a little bit too much with those kind of physical tools and don't properly account for the rest of the skill set, which at cornerback especially, I think, is really important. And I, I put Witherspoon a, a good step, a good chunk ahead of him in this Bears big board. The name that you haven't heard yet that... You might be listening to this thinking that, well, why haven't you said this guy? He would definitely be higher on my big board, and I certainly understand why. Is Peter Skaronsky, the off the offensive tackle from Northwestern. And I put him right here at number, I guess, what is it? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, seven, as I'm looking over my notes. Seventh on my big board here is Peter Skaronsky. I think Peter Skaronsky was a great offensive tackle at Northwestern. And I think he will be a great offensive lineman in the NFL. I think if you draft Peter Skaronsky, you should play him at offensive tackle. I think that is what you should do. I am not 100% confident that he will hold up there. I think he might. I think he can, and I think it's worth trying. But I'm not 100% sure that he can hold up there. His arms are just short. And, and at the end of the day, like, you don't like to, you know, the numbers and arm length doesn't necessarily specifically win and lose football games, but... It, it, the NFL red rushers he's going to be going against are going to be bigger, faster, stronger, and longer than anything he went against at Northwestern. Like, I don't think he's quite as good as, like, say, Rashawn Slater, the, the offensive tackle from Northwestern that went to the Chargers, what, a couple of years ago now? He's been in the league a few years. Uh, 2021, yeah, so two seasons in the NFL. He went 13th overall. Like, I don't think he's quite as good as Slater was coming out. And so, like, that's, if, if Slater went 13th, like, that's where we start to get into, like, a range for Peter Skronsky. I think he will be a great guard no matter what. The question is whether whether I think he'll be able to be a great tackle. And he very well might be. And that's why he's seventh on my big board here because I would draft him, play him at tackle, and probably get a really good offensive tackle. But the, 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 the amount of the way I lengthened that word probably and the tone in my voice, as you heard, is why he's not a sure thing ninth overall pick, right? Because when we're talking top 10 pick in the draft, right? I want a guy who's going to be a pro bowler, a 10-year guy, a foundational piece for your offense. And like, Skaronsky can be that at guard, but I'm not drafting a guard. I'm not dra- the best guard in the draft is not, I'm not taking him with the ninth overall pick here. I mean, I, would, I didn't even, wouldn't, Brand, even Brandon Scherf, when he went that high, like, ugh, feels a little bit, I don't like drafting guards that high. They're just not financially as valuable of a position. It's like running back. Like, I just, they're very good players, not drafting them that high. B. John Robinson, not in my top nine big board. We talked, we did a podcast on Bijan last week. If you want to hear the arguments and reasons as to why Bijan is not on that, on this list, guards are not on this list either. And so Skaronsky has just enough of that, like doubt, even if it's a sliver of a doubt, or I think it's more than a sliver. I have doubt about how well he can hold up a tackle. I'd still consider taking him if other guys are not there. Cause I do ultimately think he might be able to do it, but might and doubt is not, a confident ninth overall pick. It's more of a confident 15th overall pick, right? Or 20th overall pick, which I don't know if Skronsky will last that long. I think some team will be confident enough in him and pull the trigger. But like at nine, I want a guy, man. I want I want a guy that I just know I'm going to be really happy with. And again, I think Witherspoon is that guy. I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is that guy. I think Paris Johnson is that guy. That Yep, maybe other guys will be better. Maybe other guys have a little more upside. Maybe other guys have a little higher ceiling. But those three guys our starters. They're 10 year starters. Those guys are good to go. Gonzalez might have a little more upside. Even Skaronsky could, could have some upside. Like, I mean, I get it. Like he's an athlete. He's a great athletic freak despite having the short arms, but like Witherspoon and Jigba, Smith and Jigba and, and Johnson solid. Good to go. Happy to go after that with Gonzalez and Skaronsky, we get into like very good player, but you know, very little bit of doubt here and there. And I don't want to draft doubt with the ninth overall pick. If I can avoid it, if those five guys I talk about ahead of them, Anderson, Wilson, Witherspoon, JSN, and Johnson are all gone. Then I'm left with a bunch of guys that have a little bit of doubt. And then it's about separating and sorting between the doubt and which doubt, or which question marks, which maybe red flags. They're more like yellow flags with Skaronsky or Gonzalez because they're still really good players that teams are going to be really happy with. But which of those am I more comfortable living with? And so that's why I go Gonzalez and Skaronsky as six and seven. Then there's a talent drop-off. And I... I was torn here, but for, for, for eight and nine, really the last two to round out this, this big board. Kalijah Kansi, the defensive tackle from Pittsburgh, and Lucas Van Ness, the defensive lineman from Iowa. Those guys, 
are so different as defensive linemen that it becomes really hard to rank them and separate them. I put Kansi at eight and Van Ness at nine. So and I'll explain, but to recap, the big board is Will Anderson at one, Tyree Wilson at two, Devon Witherspoon three, Jackson Smith and Jigba at four, Paris Johnson at five, Christian Gonzalez at six, Skaronsky at seven, Kalijah Kansi at eight, and Lucas Van Ness at nine. The Bears are guaranteed one of those nine football players this year. And I think you could be happy with any of them. The earlier guys, you'd be more happy with than the later guys. But even if they got Van Ness, those eight, the first eight draft picks for all those other guys we talked about, which is not happening, you'd be, I'd be happy. I'd be okay with Lucas Van Ness. I'd be happy. Wouldn't be thrilled, but I'd be happy. But here's the thing. So Cancy from Pittsburgh, it's like six foot, six one, you know, 280 pounds, small, short arms, light, super explosive, gets Aaron Donald comparisons. And maybe, maybe I just have that like FOMO PTSD of the Bears being one pick away from getting Aaron Donald and taking Kyle Fuller instead, being happy with Kyle Fuller, but like being one pick away from the super speedy defensive tackle, like Cansey is not Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald has long arms. That's part of why he's such a freak and why he's so good is because he's got the speed and the length. Cansey just has speed. And with the lack of length can get him washed up in double teams. And he struggles a little bit more to like disengage from the blockers. Like he can blow by you, but like it, when he puts his moving stuff, like to be able to create that physical separation, like disengage and make the tackle like he's more of like blow up the play but not finish the play and that's where he's not Aaron Donald and that's why he's going to go later in the draft I think or or not and not be a surefire like top 10 guy without a doubt still very exciting I still think give me the freakishly fast defensive tackles he's going to be disruptive enough that I'm not worried like yeah he's going to get washed in double teams cool don't care like double team him please do we'll have one-on-ones for everybody else go ahead I'd be happy to have you double team him as much as you want like that's great so like I lean him there because Lucas Van Ness is the opposite, right? Humongous, 275 pounds, long arms, played three technique defensive tackle two years ago, moved out to the edge this past season, can do both, could probably play both at the NFL. One pass rush move, bull rush. He bull rushed everybody at Iowa and was great at it. And that's great. He's going to be able to bull rush players in the NFL too. Very good in the running game as well, but like you need multiple pass rush moves. So you're drafting a pass rusher that you're going to have to teach and, and develop pass rushing moves. And I, I don't love the idea of taking a one move guy with the ninth overall pick in the draft. Chances are he learns pass rush moves and is very good and maybe a pro bowl player. Chances are, again, we're talking about doubt and yellow flags and nitpicking here. He's probably going to be fine. Kalijah Kansi, probably going to be fine. Christian Gonzalez, probably going to be fine. Peter Skronsky, probably going to be fine. Ideally, we're not drafting probably at nine. We're drafting yes. We're drafting sure thing or as sure as you can be in the NFL draft. And that's how that's how this sort of stacks up for me with this big board. Anderson, Wilson, sure things, blue chips. Absolutely love them. Witherspoon, Jackson Smith and Jigba and, Jigba and Paris Johnson. Maybe not quite the blue chippers, but sure things that you're really going to be foundational pieces there. Gonzalez and Skaronsky and maybe Kansi and Van Ness. Like maybe they could be better than Witherspoon and Jigba. JSN could, or, the, the, or than Paris Johnson. They might, they might end up being better. But there's enough of a might in there that, like, ideally, I want more of a sure thing with the ninth overall pick with where this franchise is right now. That's how I put this big board together. Certainly, you have to look at the rest of the draft class and say, okay, can I get an offensive tackle later? Then maybe I shouldn't take Paris Johnson here. Can I get a cornerback later? Then maybe I shouldn't take Devon Witherspoon here. Or can I get a, a pass rusher later on? Can I get a, an offensive tackle, a wide receiver later on? That has to play into how the Bears will, will do this board. That's not how we're approaching it today. We're just looking at talent level, best player available, ninth overall pick. That's how it shakes out. Would love to hear what you think, how my big board compares to your big board or how you would rank those guys differently than I would. Please leave a comment on the YouTube video on the Locked on Bears YouTube channel. Tweet us at Locked on Bears. Post in the Locked on Bears Facebook group to keep the conversation going as well. No matter how you do it, just make sure that you're subscribed to Locked on Bears. Wherever you listen to the podcast, or on YouTube. That's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making the Lockdown Bears podcast your first listen today. We're part of Lockdown Podcast Network. That's your team every day. That includes all of your Chicago sports podcasts. So if you're looking for a second listen, Lockdown Bulls, Lockdown Cubs, Lockdown White Sox, opening day, baseball season. It's already underway. I think last week I said it was next week, but I'm Baseball, I'm not, I don't follow baseball super, super closely, but hey, we got podcasts that follow it a lot closer than I do. So go listen to them for baseball. You come to me for football, go to them for baseball. Uh, Lockdown Blackhawks for your hockey needs. 
Locked on Illinois for more Devon Witherspoon coverage. Locked on Northwestern Wildcats for more Peter Skaronsky coverage. And so much more across the Locked On Podcast Network. So go find your second listen. Don't forget to come back tomorrow to make Locked On Bears your first listen once again. And of course, you have to come back for your next opportunity to bear down.